one. Lord, we thank you for loving us, for dying to set us free. We thank you that you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lead us, guide us, fill us again with your spirit. We thank you for who you are. We ask your healing touch on our body, soul, and spirit. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. So we're in 1 Corinthians 11, which uh, may be the most quoted out of context uh, of all of Paul's writings, but we'll see if we can't get some context on it. Yeah, first, uh, we've got, I've got Amplified and um, uh, CSB up. You like something better? Amplified is fine. Amplified? Yep. Okay, yep. I suppose I should take my hat off for this, but... Uh... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? <laughs> I get some insights into that, too, so we'll go around and see what it is. Yeah, me too. All right. Uh, so, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, Amplified Version. Imitate me, just as I imitate Christ. What an incredibly uh, amazing sentence that is. And, and our modern mind cringes at it because we just want to imitate Christ. But the reality is, when, you, when somebody first comes to Christ... They don't know Christ well, but they watch you. And not uncommon for them to think uh, too highly of you in the beginning. Um, and eventually you let them down. But the idea is to help them to be, help them to grow independently dependent upon Christ. And to do that, they have to imitate you, which means that you have to be doing it right too. Right. Amen. Verse 2. I praise and appreciate you because you remember me in everything and you firmly hold to the traditions that is the substance of my instructions just as I have passed them on to you. Okay. So he starts with stroking them for what they do well and then he criticizes them for what they do poorly. Uh, you've held on to the things I taught you You've held on to the traditions and to the insights that I've given you, but. Right. Verse 3. But I want you to understand that Christ is the head, the authority over every man. And man is the head of the woman, and God is the head of Christ. Every man who prays or prophesies. Okay, now, now let's hold on to that. Okay. So there are some assumptions in here, um, husbands and wives, that um, this is misquoted um, by people who don't understand what the scriptures say. The scriptures say that I'm responsible to love Kathy as much as Christ loved the church. And if I have attained that um, level of agape, then it's okay to follow me. But if I have not attained that, then, then you need to be obedient to what God would have you to do. And often that's the difficult, um, a difficult person, place to put the wife or the, or the woman in this context, or the man in this context. And, uh, so Christ is the leader of all. I am responsible for the things that happen in my household as much as I'm responsible. And Christ is Lord of all, and, and the Father is the head of Christ. Okay, now let's take us to four. Yeah, it's interesting that uh, uh, man is the head of the woman, God is the head of Christ. Remember that uh, Jesus is a, a, um, has a dual, a dual nature, yes. um, human and divine. And I think this makes it clear that, of course, the divine nature, even within him, has a priority. It's just right. a sense of setting priorities here. Uh, but, um, you know, the, the priority is to love one another and that God's kingdom is uh, sometimes referred to as uh, an upside down pyramid where Jesus is the servant of all. Uh, yeah. that, he, that he teaches us to be uh, servants to everyone else. 
So these these terms like authority and so forth, we shouldn't be using them so entirely in a secular sense. But the authority of love is the is the uh, is the um, attribute that uh, we should be looking for here, I believe. Verse four. Every man who prays or prophesies with something on his head dishonors his head. <laughs> Anyone who prays, right, or prophesies, okay, so that under those conditions, um, something on his dishonors his head. In, in fact, it, it, what it's saying in the light of, of in the context of the previous uh, verse is that uh, uh, he is um, it's kind of undermining his own authority as uh, wherever he is in that hierarchy of things. Uh, and the one, capital O, who is his head. So he's dishonoring his own and uh, capital O, God's head. God as head. So we have, so we have um, Jewish traditions of wearing a yarmulke or some sort of covering on their head to honor God. But one of the one of the commentaries said that wasn't common in Christ's day. That happened a couple hundred years later, that they wore a hat to honor God. And so it wasn't um, it was it was uncommon for a man to have a hat on um, in in service because the custom of having a hat on or a yarmulke on or whatever um, came hundreds of years later if I was to believe that commentary. Um, which, which, which really makes it a lot easier to understand it. Um, go ahead, five. Yeah. Uh, praise, yeah. Uh, verse five. And every woman who prays or prophesies uh, when she has her head uncovered disgraces her head. For she is one and the same as the woman who has, whose head is shaved in disgrace. Um, okay, so this is a weird culture in Corinth. This is a culture that had numerous temple prostitutions, and they would and prostitutes, and they would um, they would shave their head to show that they were in uh, in slavery to the to the temple. And then uh, it was also a custom where the um, again another commentary where the uh, even if you were a married woman, if your head was uncovered, you were telling other people that you were available. And that's, a, that's just so far from our culture that we have, we get caught up in this um, different than how the scriptures meant it. Okay. Yeah, we Trust. see. Yeah. Yeah, we see uh, uh, an effort on Paul's part here to uh, make. Uh, show the distinctiveness of the two sexes, um, yes. which is um, uh, a, it's really a reflection on creation itself. Right. That, uh, that uh, the Lord from the start made them different, man and woman, complementary, but different. Yes. And it's, it, it, this helps to preserve those distinctions. The That's whole true. business of covering one's head, too, is a Roman practice. A pagan practice, that what, uh, particularly when pagan gods were prayed to, uh, was tradition for the Romans and the pagans to cover their heads, and that he was trying to make a distinction from that uh, that group as well. Um, but these are customary gestures, after all. Um, see, I'm wearing my mine now. I like to joke that this is the American yarmulke. <laughs> yeah. Yamaka, <laughs> with the upgrade, the, the visor, of course, and uh, <laughs> symbols on top and so forth, adjustable, etc. But uh, uh, the fact is that uh, it's, it's, it's custom. And, and uh, don't want to get uh, anybody hung up on, on these things too much, but you know, to be aware of them, pray through them, and then uh, you understand that um, there are different ways to express yourself here. Uh, and um, consider that. Consider the people around you that are looking on. Uh, what are they thinking, yeah. etc. Uh, as as the previous chapter said, you know, you don't want to do things that cause other people to trip up. So 
it, it extends to your garments and so forth as well. Uh, verse 6. If a woman does not cover her head, she, yeah, she, she should cut, a, uh, cut her hair off. Have her hair cut off. Uh, it, yeah, this was a big deal because um, the uh, uh, it was custom for temple prostitutes to have long hair. Uh, but but uh, yeah, so that like uh, to, uh, if she's not going to cover her head, then make yourself distinctive from them by cutting her out. But otherwise, the hair is the glory of the woman. That's coming up here. We'll see. Um, so, you know, again, we're splitting hairs in, in a way here, but not to throw too big a pun into the mix. But uh, let's, let's read through and see where this takes us. Uh, uh, if, if it is disgraceful for a woman to have her hair cut off her hair, uh, uh, or her head shaved, she should cover her head. A man ought not to have his head covered during worship, since he is the image and reflected glory of God. But the woman is the expression of man's glory. For man does not originate from woman, but woman from man. For indeed, man was not created for the sake of the woman, but woman for the sake of the man. Are we stepping on enough toes here? <laughs> Compared to our modern culture, uh, cultural interpretations. Um, again, this is, uh, you know, keep, it, keep everything in context. It's all a matter of, trying, uh, of, of bringing your best, foot, uh, your best appearance before God. Ultimately, um, uh, and that obviously uh, re uh, requires uh, a reverence, um, uh, a way to honor uh, with uh, your presence, and um, all these things tied together. Okay, let's read from 8 through 11 altogether. 8 through 11. Okay, for man does not originate from woman, woman from man, for indeed man was not created for the sake of woman, but woman for the sake of man. Therefore... The woman ought to have a sign of authority on her head for the sake of the angels. Interesting uh, phrase there. So as not to offend them. The angels, huh? Okay. Nevertheless, women, uh, woman, sorry, is not independent of man, nor is man independent of woman. Okay. So that's really the balance is verse 11. We'll pick this up and go on from 12. I'm just not feeling real good. So the balance is that men and women are not independent of each other. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for sometimes we have to think hard about what it means. Transform us, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Yes, Lord, thank, thank you again for your word, your, your spirit, uh, and uh, for your guidance uh, in these passages that we may might see the relevance for our situations today that may ultimately bring glory to you, which is our intended purpose uh, and our, our, our raison d'etre. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your continued leading in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day, Robert. Bye.